Welcome everyone to Elements, Atoms, and the Periodic Table, or a simple look at chemistry. And chemistry is the study of stuff, as a simple way to put it, because it's going to be the stuff that our bodies are made of, it's going to be the stuff that other organisms' bodies are made of, our physical environment, and the world itself. All of those things are going to be made up of chemicals. If we take a look at life's hierarchy, remember that atoms and molecules, these chemical components were at the simplest level of the hierarchy. Therefore, they're very essential to the structure and function of living organisms and life itself. Another way to describe the stuff is to call it matter. And matter is anything that takes up space. And matter is broken down into 92 individual elements. And we organize those elements here, as you see in the periodic table. Life requires 25 essential elements and some trace elements. But I end up talking about what are called the big four. And the big four are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. The rest of the essential elements you can see listed here in the table that I've shown you. So of those big four, right, 96% of your body is made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And then the other remaining um, elements that make up your body, you can see some of those listed here. Trace elements refer to minerals mostly that we just need a little bit of in our body, but not having them can lead to some devastating health effects. So let's take a look at some example of those. This is the first example, and it has to do with the element iodine. If you don't have iodine in your diet, that can lead to what's called a goiter or hyperthyroidism because iodine is required to make thyroid hormone. Another example here is iron. The element iron is needed to transport oxygen in the blood. And if you don't have iron, then you have a condition called anemia. The last example here is the element fluorine. And fluorine is used to improve tooth health and so many municipalities put flooring into their water to help decrease tooth decay. So here's our periodic table and I'm going to show you how to read a periodic table and we're going to use carbon. So we'll take carbon out of that table just as they've done here at the bottom of the figure and we're going to look at how we read each individual elements information on the periodic table. So the top number is called the atomic number. It tells us how many protons are in the atoms of this element. There's always a chemical symbol, some shorthand that we use to describe the element. It's usually a capital letter, but sometimes it's a capital letter and a lowercase letter. And then the bottom number is called the atomic mass, or the mass number, and the most simple way to describe this is that it's the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. So here's a list of elements. See if you can determine the protons, neutrons, and electrons of any of these elements. Remember that if you know the number of protons, you essentially know the number of electrons so take a pause here and see if you can determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for each of these elements. So how'd you do? Check the table, see if your numbers match up to the numbers that are presented on the periodic table. I did round the numbers because that's a technique that we use to simplify uh, talking about the protons, neutrons, and electrons for individual elements. Next, I'm going to show you a short animation that digs a little deeper in the structure of atoms. Take care.
You can learn a lot about the physical properties of an element by reviewing the periodic table. Let's take a look at carbon as an example. The number that appears above the element symbol is called the atomic number. The atomic number tells you the number of protons that are in the nucleus of that atom. So in the case of carbon, you can see that it has six protons in its nucleus. In an atom of carbon that is neutral, there must also be six electrons. This is because the positive charge of carbon's protons must be balanced by the negative charge of carbon's electrons. Because electrons and protons have an equal and opposite charge, there must be an equal number of both protons and electrons in a neutral atom of an element. The number that appears below the element symbol is called the atomic mass. The mass of an atom depends on the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons it contains. However, since electrons are so small, their mass is assumed to be zero in most calculations. Therefore, the atomic mass of an atom is equal to the sum of its protons and neutrons. However, you'll notice that carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01. This is because the number associated with the atomic mass on a periodic table is equal to the average of its naturally occurring isotopes. All of the isotopes of carbon vary slightly in their atomic mass. When we average these together, we get 12.01. If you know the atomic number and atomic mass, you can determine the number of neutrons in an element. Simply subtract the atomic number, or the number of protons, from the atomic mass, the number of protons plus neutrons, and take the closest whole number. So 12.01 minus 6 equals 6.01, which rounds to 6. So the number of neutrons in a neutral atom of carbon is 6.